introduction uh, as I will uh, be talking about uh, random triangulations uh, and projective paths to label quantum gravity. Uh, so this is um, based on a joint work uh, with uh, Olivier Bernardi and Shin Sun uh, and I will also uh, mention briefly, briefly uh, a joint work with uh, Marie Albank and uh, Shin Sun. Uh, so in this talk we will be looking at the two models for random surfaces, uh, random planar maps and uh, label quantum gravity. Uh, and uh, informally uh, speaking, uh, the, the main result that I want to present uh, is that uh, the random planar map uh, is converging in some sense to truly well quantum gravity when uh, its size is going to infinity. Uh, so this topic is, is relevant uh, for this conference uh, because, um, uh, because projections between planar maps uh, and lattice paths uh, play an essential role in, uh, in the proofs. Uh, so I, start, I want to start by introducing these two uh, models for random surfaces, uh, and I start by introducing planar maps. Um, so a planar map, uh, it is a finite connected uh, graph uh, drawn on the sphere, uh, and which is viewed modular continuous deformations. Uh, for example, uh, the middle and the left uh, planar maps in the figure, they are considered to be the same, since we can get one from the other by applying uh, a continuous deformation. Uh, the middle and uh, the right planar maps, uh, on the other hand, uh, they are not considered to be the same. Uh, so if you view them as, as graphs, uh, they are the same, uh, but the planar embedding is different. For example, this uh, edge is moved here, and uh, this edge is moved uh, here. Uh, okay, so um, a triangulation of, of a disk, uh, it is a planar map uh, where all faces have exactly three edges, uh, except for one distinguished face uh, called the exterior face, uh, which has arbitrary degree and, and simple boundary. Uh, the ex uh, this exterior face uh, is the unique face uh, of the map, which is containing the point infinity. Uh, and, and this uh, exterior face is can, has, uh, can have arbitrary degree uh, and a uh, simple uh, boundary. Uh, so given natural number uh, numbers N and M, uh, there are finitely many triangulations of a disk which have uh, N interior vertices and M uh, boundary vertices. Uh, and uh, for most, uh, during most of this talk, when we work with um, random planar maps, uh, then we assume uh, that we're working with a triangulation uh, of a disk uh, which has been sampled viewed from that random uh, from uh, this finite collection of, um, uh, of the planar maps. Uh, so in this uh, in this figure, you can see uh, two simulations uh, of planar maps. Uh, so in the left part of the figure, we have uh, a triangulation. Uh, so it's a planar map where all faces have exactly three edges. Uh, whereas in the part of the figure, we have a triangulation uh, of a disk. Uh, so both uh, both maps have uh, ten thousand uh, vertices, uh, and uh, this uh, this map uh, has also has a boundary which has length uh, hundred. So the boundary is given by this uh, red curve uh, that you can see. Uh, so if we sample uh, some large um, planar map uh, uniform at random, then it will typically be the case that we can uh, not uh, embed it uh, isometrically into R3. Um, but, uh, but the drawings uh, in this figure, they have been uh, chosen to, to, in some sense, uh, be as close as possible uh, to uh, an isometric uh, embedding. Uh, so planar maps, they have been studied in many different branches of both math and, and physics. Um, so the study of planar map, maps in the math literature goes at least back to the, back to the 60s, uh, when Tut, Mullen and, and others were proving uh, enumeration or counting formulas uh, for planar maps. Uh, later, they have been studied in, for example, uh, geometry uh, and in random matrix uh, theory. Uh, one application which is re very relevant for uh, this talk is in random uh, geometry, uh, where probabilists are interested in understanding uh, the geometry of large uh, random planar maps. Uh, one application which is relevant uh, for illegal quantum gravity is in conformal field uh, theory and uh, string theory, uh, where planar maps are used as models for uh, random surfaces. Uh, so next I want to introduce uh, illegal quantum uh, gravity and I start by introducing the Gaussian free field. Uh, so the free boundary Gaussian free field, it is the Gaussian uh, random field, uh, which has uh, in the unit disk, which has mean zero, uh, and which has covariance uh, given by the Neumann uh, Green's function. Uh, so Neumann Green's function is given by uh, this formula. Uh, and you can see in, in particular um, that uh, the covariance is blowing up uh, logarithmically uh, as the two points Z and W approach uh, each other. Uh, as you can see from, from this definition uh, that the Gaussian free field it can't be well defined uh, as a function uh, because this uh, Norman Green's function it's equal to infinity uh, on the diagonal. Uh, so heuristically speaking if Z is any point uh, in the unit disk then H of Z will be a normal random variable which has infinite uh, variance. Uh, but although this Gaussian free field is not uh, well defined uh, as, as a function, so it's not a well defined pointwise, uh, one can argue that it's well defined uh, as a random uh, distribution uh, or a random uh, generalized function. 
so this means that if f is some smooth uh, test function, uh, then we can integrate uh, f against the Gaussian tree field. Uh, and this will give us some um, random uh, real number. Uh, and this random re real number will, will be normally distributed uh, with mean zero and uh, a covariance uh, or, or uh, and a variance depending on uh, the particular choice of, of test function f. Uh, so to define Lee-Will quantum gravity, uh, then um, uh, then we assume first that H is some uh, smooth function defined in the unit disk, uh, and that gamma is some parameter which is between uh, zero and, and two. Uh, so then we can define uh, an error measure and a metric uh, or distance function uh, in in the unit disk. Uh, so this measure uh, it is um, defined by considering the measure with density e to the power gamma h uh, relative uh, to Lebesgue uh, error measure. Uh, whereas this uh, metric uh, or distance function, it is defined such that uh, distances are locally rescaled by e to the power gamma h divided by, by 2. Uh, so if we have some p, uh, then we get the length of this path by integrating e to the power gamma h over 2 along this path. Uh, and we say that the distance between two points uh, is the length uh, of the shortest path between the two points. Uh, so Lee-Will quantum gravity, it is, uh, it is the surface we get if we let uh, h be equal to the Gaussian free field. Um, so this uh, definition of, of a Lee-Will quantum gravity surface, it doesn't make rigorous sense uh, because it's a distribution and not a function. Uh, so it's not obvious uh, what e to the power of some constant times h uh, means. Uh, but it turns out that, uh, um, that the error measure mu and the distance function or metric d uh, associated with the surface can be defined uh, in a rigorous way. Uh, so the idea is, um, uh, is uh, that we let uh, h sub epsilon uh, be some regularization uh, or smooth uh, approximation uh, to h. Uh, then we use h sub epsilon uh, to define uh, an error measure mu uh, and a distance function or, or metric uh, d. Uh, and, then, um, and then it's possible to show that this uh, measure mu and distance function d, uh, or this, uh, this uh, measure which is defined by, well, with h sub epsilon and this um, uh, distance function defined with h sub epsilon, uh, that these converge to some um, a limiting um, measure mu and some limiting metric uh, d uh, when epsilon is sent to zero. Uh, so um, error measures mu and um, uh, of this kind, uh, they um, so the construction of such error measures uh, are classical. Uh, it's classical and it goes back to uh, at least uh, the 70s and, and 80s. Uh, on the other hand, this uh, the construction of such uh, distance function or, or metrics. Uh, so that's a much harder uh, problem and uh, and this was only uh, done uh, two, two years ago. Uh, so um, uh, so the construction presented here, it works for all gamma between zero and, and two, um, but the special case when gamma is equal to the square root of eight thirds is playing a special uh, role. And it's playing a special role because it corresponds to the scaling limit of uh, uniformly sampled uh, planar maps. Uh, so Lee-Will quantum gravity for this special value of, of gamma is, is also uh, can also be called uh, the Brownian uh, map. Uh, so I know that many uh, people attending the conference uh, they may not be uh, very familiar with Lee-Will quantum gravity for uh, from earlier. Uh, and um, what I'm uh, so the definitions and constructions given in given in this slide and also the previous slide they will not actually be playing an important role uh, later in the talk. Uh, so the only thing which will be used uh, later in the talk, it is that uh, Lee-Will quantum gravity is a way of defining uh, a random uh, error measure and a random distance function or metric uh, in the unit disk. Uh, and we will also uh, also be, be using that this special value of, of gamma corresponds to uh, what we call the Brownian map. Uh, okay, so, uh, so we have seen these two uh, models for random surfaces, uh, so random planar maps uh, and Lee-Will quantum gravity. Uh, and uh, both of these, um, uh, models for random surfaces, they were uh, studied uh, by um, physicists in, in the 80s. Uh, and, uh, and in the physics lit literature, um, uh, these two, two models uh, for random surfaces are viewed as, as equivalent. Uh, so random planar maps are viewed as some uh, discrete uh, approximations to Lee will uh, quantum gravity. And it is implicitly assumed in, in many works that, um, that random planar maps uh, converge in some sense to LQG uh, when their size uh, is going uh, to infinity. Uh, so, um, uh, so, so the physicists they used the, these uh, conjectural uh, relationships for several purposes. Uh, for example, they used it uh, to predict uh, exponents uh, associated with um, with statistical physics models and and dimensions of uh, random fractals. Uh, and several uh, predictions made in this way um, they have uh, they were later um, confirmed rigorously uh, in uh, in the math literature. Uh, so. Um, uh, so, um, uh, so the physicists they somehow understood that these two uh, models uh, for random surfaces are, are the same, uh, but understanding and making rigorous sense of, of these ideas has been a mystery uh, to mathematicians for, uh, for at least 15 years. Uh, so the first we can ask uh, as mathematicians is what does it even mean for uh, a planar map to converge? 
uh, and there are at least uh, three different senses or, or topologies uh, in which a uh, planar map can converge uh, when the size is going to infinity. Uh, so we can say that the planar map is converging as uh, as a metric space. Um, so this um, uh, so planar map is a metric space if equipped with uh, the graph distance uh, and uh, convergence of uniformly sample planar maps um, viewed as metric spaces has, has been proved uh, in, uh, in in several cases uh, first by Logal and Mirmont and, and later by by several others. Uh, so, second notion of convergence uh, is given by um, uh, what we call uh, mating or trees topology. So, this uh, what this means is that we consider some statistical physics model uh, on the planar map, uh, and then uh, we show that certain observables uh, of uh, this map with with a statistical physics model uh, is converging um, as the size of the planar map is going to infinity. Uh, this uh, notion of convergence was first uh, introduced uh, in works of Duplantier, Miller, and Sheffield, and, and Sheffield, uh, and later they have been established uh, also by by several others. Uh, a third notion of convergence uh, is given by convergence of the conformal structure uh, of the planar map. Uh, so this was uh, recently established in, in a work with, uh, with Sun. Uh, so in this talk, we will be focusing uh, on the first two uh, notions of convergence. Uh, so these are the most uh, relevant one because they are um, typically carried out uh, via projections to, to lattice paths. Uh, in order to prove um, uh, the first notion of convergence, so convergence viewed as uh, a metric space, um, then uh, one typically applies um, something I call a metric uh, bijection. Uh, and then uh, in order to prove, um, establish the second uh, type of convergence, uh, then, uh, then one um, is, is typically using what I call a mating of trees uh, bijection. Uh, so, um, uh, so, uh, so we have these two, uh, two families of, uh, of projections. Uh, we have the metric uh, projections uh, and these uh, mating of trees projections. Uh, so uh, the most famous uh, metric projection uh, is the projection which is known as uh, the Cory Wokela Schaefer uh, projection, which is also often just called uh, the Schaefer projection. Uh, and there are some other examples given, given in the second uh, bullet point. Uh, in the third bullet point, uh, you can see some examples of, uh, of mating of trees uh, projections. Uh, so what both of these uh, families of uh, projections have in common uh, is that they involve uh, projections between um, uh, this paths and, uh, and trees. Uh, so at the very bottom uh, of the slide, uh, you can see um, a projection between uh, a tree and, uh, and a lattice path known as uh, its contour function. Uh, so if we're given uh, this contour function, uh, then we can get the tree by uh, identifying points that lie on the same uh, horizontal line uh, under the tree. So in other words, we start with uh, this contour function and we squish it uh, together, uh, and then we we get this uh, we get this tree. Uh, and and variants of this projection are considered uh, in in both these uh, two families of, of projections. And so it's even the case that in both families of projections, uh, then one uh, is consider considering a pair of trees. Uh, so one has two trees, and each uh, which is encoded uh, via lattice path um, uh, by using a projection of a similar flavor as the one uh, at the bottom of of the slide. Uh, so another thing that uh, both these two families of uh, projections uh, have in common uh, is that there are uh, direct continuum analogues uh, of the projections. Uh, so in the case of uh, metric uh, projections, uh, the continuum analog uh, of the projection is known is, is the construction of uh, of this Brownian map. Uh, in the case of uh, of the mating of trees uh, projection, uh, then the continuum anal analog of uh, projection is uh, what we call uh, is a construction of level quantum gravity that we call uh, LQG as a mating of, of trees. Uh, so I'll come back to, uh, to everything on, on this slide, including this, in, in more detail uh, later in, in the talk. Uh, so one important difference uh, between the two families of uh, projections uh, is that, um, uh, is, that uh, when it, is that for this mating of trees uh, projection, we're considering uh, planar maps with, with decoration. Uh, by that, I mean that it is decorated by some statistical uh, physics model. Uh, on the other hand, for the metric projection, uh, then we are considering uh, only um, uh, only the planar map uh, without any uh, kind of, uh, of extra decoration. Uh, since the metric trees uh, projections, uh, they consider de decorated maps, uh, as we will see later. Uh, this also allows uh, th these types of projections uh, to, in, to, in many cases, uh, treat uh, planar maps that are not uh, uniformly sampled. Uh, so, in uh, for both uh, these two families of uh, projections, uh, then uh, the lattice path, uh, then this encoding by the lattice path is, is very useful because the lattice path is encoding important information about uh, the planar map. Uh, so, in the case of uh, the metric projections, they encode uh, distances, uh, and in terms uh, and for this um, for these mating of trees uh, projections, uh, then uh, the lattice path is um, is encoding uh, observables uh, of, of the map uh, when it is decorated by a statistical physics model. 
Uh, so I will start by uh, considering some scaling limit results for uh, planar maps uh, via these uh, metric projections. Uh, so I start by just uh, briefly uh, presenting um, this uh, CBS uh, projection. Uh, so this uh, CBS projection, uh, it is a projection between uh, quadrangulations. Uh, so planar maps where all faces have uh, four edges. Uh, and a uh, projection between these quadrangulations and uh, what, what one calls uh, well-labeled uh, trees. Uh, so well-labeled trees, uh, it is um, a tree where uh, each vertex has as a label, uh, a positive label. Uh, the root um, has label one, and otherwise adjacent labels differ by zero or plus minus uh, one. Uh, so um, in this projection, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between vertices uh, in this, uh, in the left part of the figure and in the right uh, part of the figure. Uh, and um, if we choose, um, so one key property is that if we choose some arbitrary vertex in the left part of the figure, for example, this one, we see that the graph distance uh, to the root uh, is two. And, uh, and this is uh, exactly identical to, to the label uh, of, of the same vertex in, in the setting of uh, the well-labeled tree. Uh, so this is uh, a very important property of this uh, projection, um, and, and this explains uh, why uh, this projection is, is useful for proving uh, scaling limit results uh, for um, uh, in, in, if, if you view the planar map as, uh, as a metric space. Uh, so to make this a bit more precise, uh, I will uh, quickly recall uh, this, um, uh, the definition of uh, the gromov hausdorff topology. Uh, so the gromov hausdorff topology, it is a natural uh, topology on the space of uh, compact uh, metric spaces. Uh, so, um, uh, so to define it, we first recall the definition of uh, the Hausdorff distance. Uh, so I have illustrated this in this figure. Uh, so here we have in the middle part of the figure. So here we have uh, two sets in blue and uh, in green. Uh, and then, um, uh, and then these uh, the length of these uh, red arrows is indicating the Hausdorff distance between uh, the two uh, between the two sets. So it is uh, the largest number s, such that we can find a point in one set which lie at distance at least s from from all the points uh, of the other set. Uh, so then we define the gromov hausdorff uh, distance. So that's a way to measure the distance between two uh, metric spaces. And this is just the hausdorff, hausdorff distance between uh, the two sets uh, after isometrically embedding them into the same, um, into the same metric space. Uh, so the gromov hausdorff prokhorov uh, topology, this is uh, the natural generalization of the gromov hausdorff topology uh, in a case uh, where, um, where we consider a metric uh, measure spaces. Uh, so uh, to define it, we first need to define this Prokhorov uh, distance between two measures. Uh, so it is to, so it is defined such that the Prokhorov distance is small uh, if the two measures assign approximately the same mass uh, to any set, uh, when we're allowed to slightly uh, slightly modify the sets before evaluating uh, the, uh, before evaluating uh, their uh, their measures. Uh, so the gromov hausdorff uh, Prokhorov distance is defined exactly this, in the same way as a Gro gromov hausdorff distance, except that we uh, we need to add this uh, Prokhorov distance between the two measures uh, at, at the end here uh, on, uh, on the right hand side. Uh, okay, so uh, Lugal and Mirwant, uh, they proved uh, convergence of uh, random triangulations for this uh, gromov hausdorff uh, Prokhorov uh, topology. Uh, and uh, they proved that the limiting object is this uh, metric measure space, which is known as, as, the, as uh, the Brownian map. Uh, so, um, uh, so, uh, um, uh, so in this, uh, in um, uh, so in order to, to state precisely this result, we need to explain in what way we view um, uh, this uh, random quadrangulation as a metric measure space, um, and uh, and um, the quadrangulation it has been uh, chosen such that it has uh, n vertices in total, and therefore it's natural to um, to view it as um, uh, to view it as a metric measure space by giving uh, each vertex mass uh, one divided by n. Uh, so uh, it's also natural to rescale uh, distances uh, by uh, to let it be the graph distance rescaled by n to the power minus uh, a quarter. Uh, so this is uh, natural because uh, if we rescale distances uh, in this way, uh, then the total uh, diameter uh, of the planar map uh, will be of, uh, of order one. Uh, so we recall this projection uh, to the labeled trees uh, from earlier. Uh, so it's not so hard to prove that this um, that this uh, well labeled tree. Uh, it has a scale limit. Uh, so uh, the tree itself, uh, it, is, uh, it is given by uh, the continuum tree, uh, which is known, uh, known as a continuum uh, random tree. Uh, it's also possible to argue that these uh, labels uh, on top of the tree, they also have a scale limit. Uh, and, um, and this is described uh, as, uh, as a Brownian excursion indexed by the branches on the tree. So the precise definition there is not so important for, uh, for later in the talk. 
Uh, so then uh, it, can be, it can be argued uh, that there is a similar uh, bijection uh, in the continuum uh, between this continuum random tree with, with labels uh, and, uh, and this metric measure space known as the Brownian map. And this is an exact uh, continuum analog uh, of the discrete uh, bijection. And so proving the scaling result in the right part of the figure is, is not so hard, uh, but what, what is uh, much harder is to, is to deduce the scaling result for, for the quadrangulation from, uh, from this result. Uh, but this was, was done in these two works of, uh, of Lugal and, uh, and Mirmont. Uh, so then in the work uh, with, uh, with Albank and Sun, uh, we are uh, proving a variant of uh, the result on the previous slide uh, in the setting where, uh, where the uh, where the planar map uh, instead is the triangulation of, of a disk. Uh, so comparing it to the result on the previous slide, uh, there are two differences. Uh, so uh, the first difference is that we are now considering um, uh, triangulations this, instead of uh, quadrangulations. Uh, and the other difference is that uh, the planar map in this case has a macroscopic uh, boundary. Uh, whereas uh, the planar map in, in this part, in, in this uh, setting has, uh, has disk uh, topology. Uh, where this uh, complement of, of the graph, it also has, uh, has degree. Uh, has degree four. It's a phase which also has degree four. Uh, so again, um, uh, one gets uh, the scaling limit result by a uh, rescaling. Uh, so the natural way to, to scale areas uh, and, and lengths is to rescale um, uh, areas by, by n and rescale lengths by n to the power uh, minus, uh, minus a quarter. Uh, so um, uh, so, um, uh, Bettinelli and uh, Mirmont, uh, before us, they proved uh, scaling limit results for uh, quadrangulations and also several other kinds of, of maps uh, in, the setting of, um, in the setting of maps with, with disk topology. Uh, and um, and Adario uh, and um, uh, and uh, another relevant work is the work of Adario Berry and Albank. Uh, so they were uh, they were proving scaling limit results uh, for uh, several maps, uh, but including uh, triangulations of uh, of a sphere. Uh, so we are um, uh, so we are using uh, borrowing techniques from from both of these uh, earlier works. Uh, so just as um, uh, the case of um, uh, of uh, the quadrangulations, uh, the, the results for quadrangulations, uh, we are also relying uh, on a bijection. Uh, so in our work, uh, we are relying uh, on a bijection um, uh, between uh, between uh, these uh, triangulated disks uh, and uh, what we call a blossoming forest. Uh, so a blossoming forest. Uh, so first of all, I can say that a forest it is a collection of trees, uh, and so in the figure we have uh, eight uh, trees. Uh, and um, or, yeah, seven trees. Um, uh, and, uh, and and these trees, uh, they are uh, rooted on uh, on this cycle. Uh, and this uh, cycle is representing the boundary uh, of uh, the triangulated disk. Uh, so um, an edge uh, which uh, which is connected to a leaf uh, uh, that is called uh, a blossom. Uh, so the prediction it works uh, in such a way that we are uh, replacing uh, the blossoms uh, by uh, by edges. Uh, so, uh, for example, in the middle figure, then um, then uh, this blossom has been uh, replaced by this uh, dashed uh, edge. Uh, we have that uh, this blossom has been replaced by this dashed edge, and and so on. And after one has made all, all the replacements, then it's uh, this um, uh, this uh, triangulated uh, disk. Uh, so, um, so this, uh, uh, so, so, so one reason that this projection is, is useful is because these blossoms, uh, they are encoding uh, distances in a similar way as, as the labels uh, in the setting of, of this uh, CVS or Schaefer uh, projection. Uh, so, um, uh, so if one uh, is given uh, a blossoming forest, then one can use the blossoms to associate each corner of, uh, of the map uh, with a number which is playing the analogous role as the label in the setting of, uh, of the CVS projection. Uh, so one uh, one uh, important difference from the CVS projection is that the labels that one gets in this way they are not uh, exactly an encoding distances they're only approximately uh, encoding distances uh, and in particular uh, nearby uh, the boundary of, of the map uh, then uh, it is harder to um, harder to control uh, or control uh, the distances in in the map uh, via these uh, via these blossoms. Uh, I can mention that this uh, projection that I'm describing here, it is uh, due to uh, Poul Alhan and, uh, and, and Schaefer, and um, a variant of this prediction was also considered in this work of uh, Adario Berry and, uh, and Albeck.
Um, so um, uh, the protection that I've described so far, it's actually um, it's actually between uh, blossoming forests and uh, simple triangulations of a disk. Uh, so a disk planar maps uh, where um, where uh, two edges can only be uh, connected by uh, by at most one edge, uh, and where um, where the two endpoints of an edge must must be distinct. Um, uh, but uh, but uh, but this result is holding also in the case where we allow uh, multi edges and and loops. Uh, and uh, and one can get uh, get the result uh, of, of more general types of uh, of triangulations by uh, by applying bijections between uh, between the various types of uh, of uh, triangulated disks. Uh, so for example, in in the figure, um, I'm illustrating a bijection between um, uh, between simple um, simple triangulations of a disk and uh, triangulations of a disk where also uh, multi edges are are allowed. Uh, so the idea is that, for example, we can here we have an edge. Uh, E8, as uh, so we can replace this edge E8 by this uh, map uh, M8, uh, and when we do this, then we get uh, this, um, uh, then we get this uh, submap uh, of uh, of this uh, loopless map, uh, which which has uh, which has a double edge. Uh, yeah, so that's um, now we can cover cover a larger class of uh, of triangulated disks. Uh, so uh, yeah, so um, I'm not uh, I'm not said everything I wanted to say about uh, these metric uh, projections, uh, and I will now be talking about um, scaling limits of, of planar maps uh, via um, uh, via mating of uh, of trees projections. Uh, so um, I start by presenting uh, one one simple uh, uh, simple example of a mating of trees uh, projection, which is called uh, the Mullen uh, projection. Uh, so this is a projection between uh, planar maps uh, with a spanning tree uh, and uh, and paths on on Z on Z two. Uh, so they are these paths on Z Z two. They are uh, starting and ending at the origin, and uh, they are required to stay in, inside the first uh, quadrant. Uh, so um, uh, so uh, so here you can see uh, a planar map with a spanning tree. Uh, so the planar map, the edges of the planar map, are the union of uh, the purple and uh, the blue uh, edges. Uh, and uh, the blue edges uh, they form uh, a spanning tree on uh, on this uh, on this map. Uh, so then, in the second uh, figure here, uh, then uh, you can also see um, you can also see uh, the dual uh, map. Um, and uh, so the dual map it is uh, the edges of the dual map is the union of the orange and uh, the red uh, edges, uh, and uh, the red edges uh, they form a spanning tree on on this dual map. Uh, and the spanning tree is the dual uh, spanning tree of this uh, of the spanning tree uh, T in, in blue uh, on on this primal map. Uh, so uh, the dual spanning tree is defined such that um, it contains an edge uh, if um, uh, if and only if uh, the corresponding edge is is not contained in in the primal uh, tree. Uh, so here you can see um, uh, you can see only the the, sp the spanning tree and the dual uh, tree. Uh, so from this figure you can. Uh, you can see why uh, we call these projections mating of trees projections, uh, because in some in some sense, uh, the projection uh, can be viewed as as a gluing or mating uh, of uh, of uh, two trees. Uh, and here you can see uh, the lattice path. Um, uh, and uh, roughly speaking, so if you only look at uh, the y coordinate uh, of the lattice path, then this is closely related uh, to the contour function of of this uh, blue tree. Uh, and uh, similarly, if you want to look at uh, the x coordinate of, of the path, then that's closely related to the contour function of this uh, red uh, red tree. Uh, so, um, so I want to make a few remarks. So one uh, one remark is that uh, if we sample this lattice path, lattice path uniform at random, then and we send uh, the length of the path uh, to infinity, then it converges in the scaling limit to a two D uh, Brownian motion. Uh, it turns out that the 2D uh, Brownian motion it encodes uh, a legal quantum gravity surface. Uh, so this is um, uh, a result in in a somewhat uh, similar spirit as uh, as what I was presenting on uh, on this slide. So here we also had uh, this continuum random tree with with it, with these labels, which encode uh, the Brownian map. Uh, and similarly, um, it turns out, and which I will also come back to later, that uh, um, the 2D uh, Brownian motion it encodes. Um, it encodes uh, a legal quantum uh, gravity surface. Uh, so um, another remark that I want to make is that if we choose this uh, lattice path uh, uniformly at, at random, then that corresponds to choosing a pair consisting of a map uh, with a tree uh, uniform at random. Uh, so it means uh, it means in particular that if we look at uh, at the marginal law of, of the map, 
uh, than the modern law of the map. It will be reweighted by the number of uh, distinct spanning trees uh, that it allows. Uh, so, um, uh, so, uh, so, um, so, in particular, uh, the law of uh, of the uh, of the planet map is, is not uniform. Uh, so, and for this, this reason, um, this one prediction it, it is used to prove um, uh, scaling limit results for uh, for uh, non-uniform maps um, and and and, pl and planar maps, which whose law has been reweighted by the number of, uh, of spanning trees that uh, that they allow. Uh, so in the rest of the talk, I want to uh, focus on um, uh, on a projection between um, uh, between. Uh, the disks uh, with percolation and uh, walks uh, that we call uh, that, that are called uh, Krebras walks. Uh, so uh, the Krebras uh, walks they are um, required to stay inside the first uh, quadrant. Uh, they start on this um, in our setting. They start on on the x-axis and they end at uh, at the origin. Uh, and they are only allowed to take uh, three different types of steps uh, A, B, and C, uh, which are also the three steps that you can see in in the figure. Uh, so B is straight up, A is right, and C is is the diagonal uh, step. Uh, so um, projections involving uh, Krebras works they were first uh, studied in uh, in the work of uh, Olivier Bernardi. Uh, so uh, so Krebras he he found uh, a very simple formula uh, which which was saying how many Krebras uh, works uh, of a certain length and with a certain starting points uh, that there are. Uh, so the formula was simple, but the proof uh, was quite uh, complicated. Uh, and uh, Olivier Bernardi he found um, he found a projective proof uh, for this formula. Uh, and this uh, and this was uh, and what he found was a projection between these walks and and uh, trivalent maps uh, of a certain type uh, with uh, with a depth first uh, search tree. Uh, so um, in this uh, in this figure, I have uh, drawn this uh, depth first uh, search tree in the setting of. Um, uh, of, um, uh, of of this uh, dual map, uh, which is a type of, of triangulation. Uh, so then, in um, uh, in in a later work, uh, we are uh, we are observing that uh, we can also uh, that, that there is also a projection between these um, uh, this triangulated disk uh, with uh, the first uh, search tree and uh, and um, uh, and uh, uh, triangulations of a disk with uh, with percolation. Uh, so, um, so of course, this also gives us uh, directly a projection between uh, these two objects, and it turns out that this projection is also very natural uh, and interesting. Uh, so, it's also a very, uh, a very useful projection. Also, if we don't go uh, via this um, uh, this tree. Uh, so before presenting the projection in, in more detail, I want to present some results that we can prove uh, by using the projection. Uh, so. Um, so in order to uh, to state the result, uh, then um, we first let M uh, be uh, a uniform uh, triangulation of a disk which has uh, n interior vertices and uh, root n uh, boundary vertices. Uh, then we let uh, P be a uniform coloring of the interior vertices, and uh, we also color all the boundary vertices in uh, in blue. Uh, so next, I uh, I also want to uh, to recall that uh, the conformal loop ensemble. Uh, it is a particular. It is a, a conformal invariant a collection of non-crossing non loops in uh, in the unit disk. Uh, so um, uh, and and it can be viewed as uh, as the loop uh, version of uh, the random fractal curves, which are known as uh, Schramm learn revolutions. Uh, so one way to uh, to obtain the conformal loop ensemble is to consider a critical percolation uh, on the triangle lattice uh, restricted to the unit disk. Uh, then draw all the interfaces between blue and uh, and yellow, uh, and then uh, this collection of interfaces they converge uh, in the scaling limit uh, to uh, to the CLE. Uh, okay, so um, so this yeah this was proved by uh, by Smirnov and uh, Kamia and uh, and Newman. Uh, so then uh, in the work for Bernardi and, and Son, uh, we prove uh, that okay this is actually a typo. There should be M here. So we prove um, uh, we prove that there exists uh, an embedding of of this of the planar map M uh, into uh, the unit disk, uh, such that uh, a number of interesting observable uh, of the map uh, with percolation uh, converge uh, jointly in law when uh, when uh, the size n uh, of the planar map is sent to to infinity. Yeah, and we also uh, the scaling limit; it can be described uh, in terms of uh, CLE uh, on an independent uh, Lie quantum gravity surface. Uh, so uh, when I talk about an embedding, uh, what I mean is an explicit uh, drawing of the planar map in the unit disk. Uh, 
Uh, so when I was defining planar maps, I defined them uh, modular continuous deformations, uh, and um, uh, and embedding the planar map it means that we we fix uh, this uh, degree of freedom which comes from uh, the continuum uh, this continuous deformation. Uh, so each vertex of the planar map has corresponds to a specific point in uh, in the unit disk. Uh, okay, so um, uh, so I'm. I hear that a number of interesting observables, they converge. Uh, so um, here I've given a list of, of some of these uh, observables. Uh, so first we are considering a uh, countering measure on the vertices and we prove that they converge to the Leo wheel uh, error measure. Uh, so uh, we give each vertex mass, uh, one divided by n, uh, and we say that, uh, that the mass or measure of a subset of, of the disk is equal to the mass of, uh, um, of the vertices contained in, uh, in that set. Uh, uh, yeah, and and this um, and this measure in the unit disk it converges in scaling limit um, with uh, with this particular embedding uh, to uh, the Liouville quantum gravity uh, area measure. Uh, so uh, second, we consider um, percolate uh, convergence of the percolation cycles. Uh, so when we embed the map, we get a number of percolation cycles in the unit disk, and we prove that they converge to uh, to the conformal loop ensemble. Uh, so one thing which is maybe surprising uh, at first is that uh, the limiting error measure and the limiting uh, conformal loop ensemble, they are uh, completely independent of, uh, of each other. Um, yeah. uh, so first, uh, so next, uh, we can prove convergence of a number of uh, crossing events. Uh, so this is illustrated uh, here. Uh, so uh, there are many different ways to state it, the result, but for example, one uh, one way is to we can one one thing which can be argued is that we pick three points uh, on uh, on the boundary and one uh, interior point, and we look at the event uh, that there is a blue cross which is separating, uh, separating uh, these uh, like the interior point and this point from uh, these two these two points. Uh, so um, uh, so uh, uh, all so having uh, these various crossing events, uh, this converges uh, jointly with the two other uh, observables. Uh, to um, to continuum uh, crossing events and these continuum crossing events they are uh, encoded in terms of uh, of these uh, CLE groups. Uh, okay, so um, the fourth um, in the fourth bullet point, uh, I describe um, uh, convergence of, of a pivotal measure. So uh, a pivotal point it is a point such that if we change uh, the color uh, of the of the point, then uh, CLE loop or then percolation cycles merge or or split. So for example, if we uh, change the color of one of these uh, three uh, vertices shown in yellow, then uh, the consequence will be that uh, that the percolation cycle is splitting into uh, two cycles. Uh, similarly, here we can merge the two cycles by changing the color of one of, of these two uh, vertices. And we say that the pivotal point is, is macroscopic if the loops that are involved uh, when we change the color, they are all, um, they are all macroscopic. Uh, so, um, uh, for example, in the setting of uh, this figure, then there will be pivotal points here, um, and there will also be a pivotal point here. Uh, yeah. So, um, so this is if we count a loop as macroscopic if it contains at least uh, at least two uh, two vertices. Uh, so uh, we give each uh, pivotal point we give it mass uh, n to the power minus uh, one over four, uh, and um, uh, and we argue that um, that this uh, so, th so this gives us some uh, random measure uh, in the unit disk, and we can prove that this uh, measure is converging uh, in the scaling limit uh, to some uh, limiting measure in, in the disk, uh, and uh, this limiting measure it can be dis described uh, explicitly in the continuum as uh, some uh, some uh, some touching measure uh, between uh, between the between uh, the CLE loops. Uh, okay, so uh, finally, we can also prove uh, convergence of what uh, we call the percolation uh, exploration tree. So this is actually exactly the tree uh, which is uh, was considered in uh, in the, the projection discovered by uh, Bernardi. Uh, so if we um, uh, embed uh, embed the planar map and we draw this um, uh, exploration tree, uh, then uh, then it turns out that the that the branches of, of the exploration tree it converges to variants of uh, the random fractal curves known as uh, Schramm Lerner uh, evolutions. And this exploration tree can also be defined uh, directly in the continuum as a function of, uh, of this uh, CLE. Uh, so, um, uh, so I also want to uh, say a few words about uh, a few more words about the proof. Uh, so, uh, as mentioned before, it's based on, on this projection between uh, triangulated disks with uh, percolation and uh, these uh, Kravras works. Uh, 
Uh, so, um, uh, and this prediction is, is very useful because uh, many of the observables uh, that we're interested in, they are nicely encoded by the walk. So it means that if we don't uh, observe the map with percolation, but we only observe the walk, uh, then we can read off a number of, uh, of interesting uh, observables, um, such as um, uh, the length of, of various Healy loops and how they're connected together and, uh, and so on. Uh, so, um, uh, so in when the when the size of um, of the map goes to infinity, then the length of the walk uh, also goes to infinity, and then uh, the walk is converging in the scaling limit to uh, to a Brownian uh, excursion, uh, which stays inside uh, stays inside this cone. Um, and uh, it was proved by uh, Duplantier, Miller, and and Sheffield uh, that there is a similar uh, projection uh, in the continuum. Uh, so there is um, a kind of projection in the continuum between these Brownian uh, excursions and uh, Liouville quantum gravity surfaces with uh, with CLE. Uh, so I will not describe in the details of, of this projection, but I can uh, I can say that it is uh, a direct uh, continuum analog uh, of the projection uh, in in the discrete. Uh, so in the discrete uh, setting, then uh, then the observables we're interested in they are encoded by uh, by this walk uh, in the continuum. Uh, the observables we're interested in they are encoded by the Brownian uh, excursion. And then by showing a uh, convergence of the walk uh, to the Brownian excursion in a sufficiently strong sense, uh, we can also get um, a convergence of these observables uh, that we are interested in. Uh, so for example, it, it turns out that um, uh, that the percolation uh, cycles, um, they are, uh, there is um, an injection uh, from uh, the collection of percolation cycles to the set of uh, of sub um, of the subwalks, uh, such uh, subwalks that uh, that stay in a cone. Um, and and similarly, there is um, there is uh, correspondence in, uh, in the continuum where an injected map from the CLE loops and two two cone excursions embedded in uh, in this Brownian uh, excursion. Uh, so, um, as for example, in order to when proving um, a scaling limit result from the walk to the Brownian excursion, then we need to keep a careful careful track of uh, the times uh, times that we call cone times. Meaning times where the, where both coordinate of, of the walk or the Brownian uh, excursion have, have a simultaneous uh, running infimum. Uh, okay, so um, uh, okay, so uh, next I want to uh, present the projection in slightly more detail. Uh, so um, if we are given uh, if we are given uh, only this uh, this walk, I will explain how to how to obtain the map uh, with percolation. Uh, so um, the way we proceed is that we read the letters uh, of this uh, walk or steps of the walk uh, one by one uh, and build the map dynamically. Uh, so for example, um, we can start by um, uh, um, so the, the first uh, the first step in the walk is a, is a step uh, B. Uh, so every time we read a step A or B, then we add uh, a triangle. Uh, so um, at any step in the procedure, there is a special edge which we call the head and which is marked in red. And if um, if we read the letter B, then we move the head to the left part of the added triangle. And if we read the letter A, we move the head to the you know, we, we, here we move uh, we put the head to the left, and here we move put it, uh, to to the right. So here we have read the letter B, so we put it to to the left. Uh, so here we have letter, uh, read the letter A, so we add a triangle and put the head uh, on the right side of the added uh, triangle. Uh, here we have uh, a letter um, read the letter B. Uh, here we read letter C. So every time we read uh, a letter C, uh, then what we do is that we take um, the edge uh, which has the head, and we glue it uh, to uh, to either its left side or to its its right side. Uh, so in this case, uh, we glue it uh, to to the left side, uh, and um, when we glue uh, the head to the left side, then we also move the head uh, to to the right side. Uh, so when we glued these two edges uh, to each other, then one vertex is trapped and we color it uh, in, in blue. Uh, so if we had uh, glued this edge to, to, the, to the right side instead, then we would have colored uh, the vertex uh, yellow in, instead. Uh, so here we read letter B, we read the letter B, uh, we read the letter A, uh, we read the letter B, we have another set uh, C. Uh, here we have uh, another set, another um, uh, another letter uh, C. Uh, so in this particular case, there was uh, no no free uh, triangle on the left side to which we could glue uh, this head. So therefore, we just let um, let this uh, edge remain exposed. Um, and here we add another triangle uh, corresponding to the letter A. 
here we do another gluing uh, and here we read the letter C again and here we're finished. So from going to uh, this figure to this figure, that's simply done by identifying, by gluing together all the edges that are, that are, um, that are indicated by arrows, that is indicated by arrows that should be, uh, should be glued together. Um, okay, so, um, so this is uh, the projection um, in the setting of triangulated uh, disks. Uh, at the end, I also want to uh, mention uh, briefly an, an infinite volume uh, variant uh, of, of this uh, projection. Uh, so, um, uh, so it gives us, uh, what it gives us is a correspondence between um, uh, the, plan the infinite planar map, which is known as the Uniform Infinite Planar uh, Triangulation, or uh, UIPT, uh, and uh, works with uh, IRD increments uh, A, B, and, uh, and C. Uh, so this uniform infinite planar triangulation, uh, it is, um, uh, it is uh, an infinite planar map, which is illustrated uh, here in, in the figure, and it can be obtained uh, as a local limit uh, of this triangulated uh, disk. So if we sample uh, a vertex uniformly at random, uh, and we look at the local limit at the, at the size of, uh, of the triangulated disk goes to infinity, then, then we get this UIPD. Uh, so um, uh, and and this uh, and this uh, infinite volume uh, correspondence uh, between uh, these two objects it's also obtained uh, via a local limit. Uh, so um, so it's obtained by looking at uh, at this projection and then um, uh, taking taking a lo local limit on uh, on both sides. Uh, so this uh, infinite volume uh, variant of the projection it is uh, very useful because it uh, it allows to relate uh, properties of uh, this uh, UIPT and uh, and legal quantum gravity. Uh, so uh, it has, for example, been used by Gwyn and Miller and uh, uh, and Gwyn and, and Hirschcraft uh, to prove properties of a random walk uh, on the UIPT. Uh, so um, uh, so uh, uh, so the proofs are carried out by doing cert certain estimates uh, in the continuum on the side of LQG, and then use the projection to transfer uh, these estimates uh, to to the UIPT. Uh, so, for example, um, some examples of things they can they can prove is uh, the probability that random walk is returning to the starting point after uh, n steps, uh, the typical distance um, traveled by the random walk after taking uh, n steps, uh, and, uh, and and also uh, also a few other things. Um, uh, okay, so um, so that's that's one application. Another uh, application is um, in the study of LQD surfaces. Uh, so here. Um, one starts with estimates on the side of the UIPT uh, and uses this to obtain uh, estimates for uh, LEO uh, quantum gravity. So as we saw earlier in the talk, uh, if we have um, uniformly sampled planar maps, then uh, distances in these maps are, uh, are quite uh, well understood uh, and it's possible to transfer these uh, to the continuum via the projection. It's even possible to get some results for uh, general uh, values of, um, of gamma, so even values of gamma not corresponding to the scaling limit of the UIPT by using some uh, monotonicity properties uh, in, in the continuum. Okay, thanks. So, thank you Nina for your talk. If I'm right, there are no questions at the moment on the chat, um, but you can um, type them. I have and a quick question. For a yes. I have a quick question. Okay, is let's turn on our Intuitive reason why gamma equals the square root of eight over three? Uh, yeah, so uh, I would say that it's um, it's somehow hard to give, uh, to explain exactly the square root of eight, eight thirds because when we, in all these, uh, in everything I've said, so when we define liable quantum gravity, then uh, the choice um, the particular choice of, of constants is always a little bit arbitrary. For example, in physics, it's common that they, I, I use a parameter b, now a parameter gamma. In physics, one often uses something, uh, a parameter called uh, b, and it's just related by, by gamma equals 2b. So it's, um, so it's a little bit arbitrary somehow exactly, um, uh, so somehow exactly why that particular number arises is somehow, I can't really give any, particular reason for that due to this arbitrariness. Um, but there are somehow, there are various, um, uh, so, so I would just say that it, it is somehow the value that corresponds to uniformly sampled planar maps and 
Uh, but also on the continuum side, one can see that Lewell quantum gravity surfaces with this particular value of gamma, they do have some they do have some special properties and symmetries which are not satisfied by uh, the other values of uh, of gamma. So one can somehow see in the continuum that there is something something special for this uh, this particular value. Uh, I can yeah yeah. Uh, uh, okay, so I think you are on on mute. I think it's actually on mute. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, another quick, another quick question. I was really fascinated how the Clevaras works came up in this very highbrow, sophisticated uh, message. It's really because I really like these works. Okay. So it uh, two questions uh, related about them. Uh, uh, what if you have another set of steps? Can you make sense? Any sense? Does this bijection extend to other objects if you replace other sets of quarks instead of the specific crevasse steps? Uh, so, uh, so these, um, uh, so earlier in in the talks, I was mentioning that there is like a large class of bijections which are called which I call mating of trees bijections, uh, and these are uh, are quarks. You know, these are uh, bijections between uh, between uh, lattice uh, paths uh, and uh, and various types of maps, and and they all all have somehow a similar type of flavor. Uh, so, um, uh, so, um, uh, so I, I wouldn't say one can't somehow, uh, uh, yeah, so I would say it's, it's a similar flavor. So by, uh, they're all in a similar flavor in the sense that one can read, um, uh, read, uh, one can build the map dynamically by reading steps of walk one by one. And there are somehow, the walk is also representing sort of similar, uh, similar, uh, things um, geometrically speaking. Um, uh, so yes, one, one can in in some sense it also works for other uh, other um, lattice lattice paths. But it's it's uh, an interesting open question is is to find more of them. Um, so there are some which have been found already, but uh, there are probably lots of them that we haven't really discovered yet. Uh, so that's somehow that's an interesting interesting direction. And there was a question by Svante, if I got it right. Yes, yes. Uh, so, uh, thanks. I think this is uh, very uh, beautiful and uh, impressive uh, stuff, and I wish I knew more of it. Uh, but uh, since I don't, I'll start, uh, start with a very basic, simple thing. Uh, if I understood you correctly, uh, your Brownian disk is uh, closely related to the Brownian map by Le Gallemo, uh, and uh, but uh, yeah. but there is a topological uh, difference that uh, their their Brownian map is uh, homeomorphic to a sphere, but your Brownian disk is a disk with a a boundary. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, but are they locally essentially the same, or maybe they are precisely uh, yeah. the same? Uh, yeah, uh, locally they are exactly the same. Uh, yes. So they have the same they have the same local properties. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. And so then you. Yeah, sorry. And yeah, no, also the Brownian disk, it's, uh, it's reviewed as just a disk analog of, uh, of the Brownian map. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's essentially what you, if you take two Brownian disks and glue them together in the right way, you, you should get the Brownian map somehow. If you can uh, take yeah, so this Brownian. is, um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's a good, uh, good question. So, uh, and it actually happens, the answer is actually, um, is, is actually yes, uh, that you do get it in a certain sense. So this has, this was actually proved uh, very, very recently um, in, um, uh, so, uh, well, yeah, uh, so, so there was, um, well, yeah, actually, in, I guess maybe, okay, maybe in the special case when gamma is equal to eight thirds, um, I guess it could, yeah. um, let me see, uh, maybe, no, it was actually, yeah, it was, it was not, it was not even known in, in that case. Um, uh, it was it was not known uh, it was not known before. So this is so it's actually proven in a very recent uh, recent work um, follows from a very recent work of uh, of um, uh, of Maurice Ang and Shin Sun and myself uh, where we where we're arguing that um, uh, that uh, um, if one glues together two Brownian disks, one actually does get uh, does get the Brownian map. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's actually not uh, 100%. Uh, it's it's not uh, it's not it's not obvious uh, because no, if you yeah. I understand because I understand things get complicated at the boundary. 
Yeah, so, yeah. Yes. So of course you can, yeah, you can glue together two disks, and you can you do get uh, if you are on the discrete side, then if you take two maps with this topology, you can glue them together, and you can form a sphere. But the sphere will have a path, so it means that it's not actually a uniform sphere, but no. it's actually a sphere which has been reweighted by the number of, of self-avoiding uh, polygons on top of it. So that's why it's not Aha. it's not obvious. Um, but uh, but it turns out that actually this reweighting by the number of polygons it, it doesn't actually change the asymptotic behavior of um, uh, of this uh, uniform, um, for example, quadrangulation. So yeah. And another related question. You mentioned here at the, the end of infinite uh, planar map. So is there a yeah. limit there as a kind of non-compact uh, Brownian plane also? Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, that has been constructed. Uh, so I think maybe it's, it's a paper of Legal and Curian, maybe. So they, they, there, is, there is a paper which is constructing um, the analog, which is, uh, which is called the, which, the object, which is called the Brownian plane. Uh, and it can be described simply by, uh, if you have the Brownian map, you take sample uniform point on the Brownian map and you somehow zoom in, uh, then you get the Brownian plane. So it's the local limit of, uh, of the Brownian map. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. If I remember well, uh, Nicola Curian was also defining the half plane, plan yeah, map, and surprisingly, yeah. a plane is not the union of two half planes, yet again. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's um, that's uh, yes, the yeah, disk yeah. sphere counterpart. Uh, even on the plane, which is a bit simpler, not even that one is working. You have to glue a random number of half planes before having a true plane. If I okay, remember yeah, well. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, yeah. I, okay. Maybe. Uh, yeah. At least. At least it doesn't really work to just glue together two half planes because. Uh, yeah, yeah, and the deterministic number of outplanes would be yeah. surely wrong. Maybe there is a probability distribution on the number of outplanes. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Do we have other yeah. questions in the either physically in the main room or uh, right, virtually? Uh, first time, I would have one. <laughs> the first very nice talk. Thank you very much. You go ahead. Uh, uh, is, is there something you could say about uh, Gromov Hausdorff scaling limits of the uniform spanning tree of a large uniform triangulation or, or planar map? Is this something uh, so known? Uh, so it's what you asked about is the Gromov Hausdorff uh, limit of this uh, planar map with a spanning tree? Uh, no, actually, the uniform mm -hmm. model. Or if, I, if, I, if I understand correct, like the, the non uniform model with a decorator, yeah. a decoration. The yeah. decorated spanning tree kind of behaves very differently from uh, uniform spanning tree in the uniform model. Is that, is that right? Um, yeah, so if you take, um, so let's say if you look at this spanning tree weighted map, uh, then properties are very different from if you had uh, taken first a uniform map and then taken the tree. Uh, so these models behave very, very differently uh, asymptotically. Um, yeah. So, okay. so, so is the question, what is... So in the uniform uh, models, like a uniform yeah. map, uniform spanning tree, do we know yeah. the kind of Hausdorff scaling limit or do we know some properties of it? Uh, so, of course, if you look at only the marginal law of the map, then of course we can get um, the Gromov uh, Hausdorff limit. But then the question is, what happens if you add the spanning tree on top of this, uh, whether it has... Um, uh, whether it has some some limit. Um, uh, as far as I, I don't I don't know any such um, I don't know such uh, uh, such results. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I so I know that uh, I know what it should be. I know what the what the scaling limit somehow. I think I think I know what it should be. I think it should just be. I I, I think it should just be uh, um, that the scaling limit. The uniform spanning tree should always have the same scaling limit, no matter which map it's drawn on. So, if you have some some sort of reasonable lattice, which can be a uniform map, it can be a tree weighted map. Um, then, then somehow the scaling limit of the uniform spanning tree model it somehow should should always be the same object. Uh, but then, actually proving the convergence turns out to be much more tractable when uh, when uh, the map is weighted by the statistical physics model.